Hey everyone, thanks for joining me today. This is Patty from PS Paper Crafts, and I'm going to show you how to use the um, gift bag punch board to make um, a bag. We're going to make this bag today. This is a small bag. You can make a small, a medium, or a large bag um, with this board, just following the directions that are printed right here. Um, the small, let me just show you the difference. The small, and then the medium, and then we have a large. It's the, the width of the bag that makes a difference. Um, so the, the depth is the same on all of them. And then the length you control, or the height. So uh, it depends on what size paper you use. So this is um, a 10 inch sheet by six, and this is 11 by eight, and this is 12 by 12. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit more about how that works, but I thought they were pretty, um, they're all Christmassy. We're in that season. So we're going to work on this one today. And let me just show you the board. So there are directions. Um, you, it will say to trim your paper small 10 inch, medium 11 inch, large 12 inch. And then the length is between 4 inches and 12 inches. Um, so you can vary this. And that's this part. You can make it higher or you can make it shorter. So this is 10 inches by 6 inches. So this part was the 6 inch that went around. Um, and then you're going to just follow the directions step by step. Now, I would suggest that you try this on a piece of um, scrap paper or cardstock before you do it, just to get the feel of it. So it's a little bit, you know, you kind of have to get used to it. So this is what you're going to end up with, kind of like this picture here. Um, when you're done. So you're going to kind of go in and follow the instructions and we'll go through that in a second. Um, I just wanted to tell you that if you did have something like for instance this where you wouldn't want these to be sideways or upside down you kind of have to think about how you're going to cut your paper um, so that the um, the what am I, the 10 inches is this way so this would be this way um, and then the, the height, the variation would be this way. And when you feed your paper in, you're feeding the bottom in first. So this is your bottom. So you just want to make sure that you're not, you know, feeding it in this way and then your bag comes upside down. So that's only if you have a pattern that has to be in a certain direction. Like this doesn't matter and this doesn't really matter. So... Um, just to keep that in mind, really kind of think about through this whole process, I would say, think and maybe even talk to yourself. That's what I do <laughs> while you're doing this. So, uh, we have the, uh, score tool in here and we're just going to get our sheet of paper. So I have one in Sahara sand and I chose Sahara sand because it really worked well with this background. So this is kind of cheating a little bit like these. I made the whole bag in designer series paper and it takes pretty much uh, you know a 12 by 12 sheet so if you wanted to save on that you could just do the front of the um, of the bag and just coordinate it so this would probably be nice in the Merry Merlot or um, I'm not sure what green that is but it's on the on the paper on the the package let me just check <clears throat> so unfortunately this is a uh, designer series paper that's no longer available it ran out it was so pretty so this would be Tranquil Tide. So I would say any of these colors, um, you could, even Soft Suede is this darker brown. So see it how it tells you the colors on the paper? So that just makes it helpful when you're trying to coordinate. So let's get started. I'm just gonna put this aside. And you're always going to punch and score horizontally. Um, so you're gonna line your cardstock, the edge, right up against the start line. So it says start line here, and you're gonna punch, and it is a little bit of a punch, um, so I always like to do it standing up. And then you're going to do this horizontal score. And I'm gonna move, see some of it's blocked here, so I'm just gonna move this down. You'll see it's kind of uh, missed it there. So, and that will always happen because it's underneath here. And then you're gonna line this back up, and you're going to do the small, the medium, or the large. So we're doing a small, and we're just going to go down the side. So this is the front of our box. Now we're gonna move this line all the way over to the start, start line, 
and we're going to punch and then we're going to do our horizontal now we want to do the side of the bag so let me just pull this up so we did the front now we want to do the side and we need this area this kind of Y so we can pinch it so you're doing front and now we want to do the side and no matter what size you do small medium or large you're going to do the sides the same and then you're going to do this side and this triangle so now we have a front and a side and this is where I talk to myself um, now we're going to do the back, front, side, back. So we're going to line it up to the start line, punch. We're going to do our horizontal. Now we're going to do our back. So we want to do a small bag. So you'll see how wide that is. Front, side, back. And then we're going to move this all the way to the start line. And we're going to punch. And we're going to do our horizontal. And now we're going to do a side. So we're going to do this side. And we're going to do the triangle, triangle, and then this side. And then we're going to move it one more time. And we're going to punch. Get that lined up right in that line. And now we have pretty much the same as this. Now what I did was I just snipped off this because I wanted my, um, this is gonna be my tab that I'm going to adhere. So I just wanna get the angles. It just makes it fold a little bit nicer. And we'll do an angle here as well. And that gives us a good tab. A lot of times when you make boxes, you wanna angle things just so that it folds nicely. Now, before we put this away, we want to get the holes, and that's if you want to put ribbon through. So we put ribbon through all of ours. You don't have to put ribbon through. You could uh, not do the holes, and you could do a clip. Like I do have one. This is one that I made a while back, and I just used one of those galvanized clips to hold it closed. You could use uh, like those binder clips, or um, I'm going to show you a different technique tomorrow if you come back. And um, I'll show you how you can fold a top over. So let's get this going. Now, um, what you do is you're going to turn this around. And here's all my little pieces. And we're going to go over here and use this as a guide. So let me get these out of the way. And there's a, a point right here. And we're going to just line up the edge. And this will just make the holes. So this is an easier punch. And then you're going to move down, and you're only going to do this where there's a full line. You're not going to do the sides. So we're going to do this. And you'll see this one made two holes. We're not going to do this one. We're going to come over here. That has a full line all the way down. We'll punch. We're going to do this one. Punch. And then we're even going to do this last one because we want the one hole. And that's it. So now we have our box cut out, or our bag cut out. And now you just want to fold everything nicely. And you can use this to make sure everything folds nicely. Now the sides, I don't fold as, uh, I don't know, I don't do too much with the folding. I just kind of pinch it. But if you wanted to, you could fold it with the bone folder. I'm going to do the bottoms, and I'll just show you what I mean, how I do those. I don't get too carried away with them, because I don't think they're like, you know, major. So I'll just kind of fold it in, and then you can bend that, bend that a little bit. Okay, so now you can either use tear tape or liquid glue. I'm going to use the tear tape, and I usually cut my tear tape. Um, and you're going to put it on this tab. So let me just get this going. And we'll just put a piece down here. Now, if you go over too long, I'll show you what you can do. You could just fold it back. Oops. 
did I put my scissors? Here they are. I just like to, to cut it. I know you can just tear it, but I like to cut it. So we're going to put this down. It's a little cockeyed, but that's okay. And then I'm going to just pull the glue off. And it goes over. I don't know if you can see that. You just fold it back on itself. It's just glue on top of glue. And then you're going to fold the front over and try to really line it up good. And now you have the beginnings of your box. And then you can do these pieces. And what I do is I'll put a piece um, here on the inside and here on the inside. So let's do those two pieces. Cut that a little long. Let me just cut that off. Should probably measure it first. And then we'll do one on this inside piece. Oh, making a mess here. Okay. So I'll open that so you can see it. You could put a couple of pieces here if you wanted to. I'm just going to put the one piece. It's pretty sturdy. And the cardstock, you know, if you do this kind of a box, the cardstock is a little bit sturdier than the um, designer series paper. So if you wanted to just do what I did and, and um, you know, put it on the, um, decorate it on the front of the card of the, the box or the bag. Boy, I'm calling it everything wrong here. So you're going to want to make sure that you square it up and, um, and put it down and then take this one off. I'm just going to fold this back a little bit and just again make sure it's squared up. And then what I usually do is I take my um, bone folder and just press that down. So we have our box. Pretty neat, right? Decide which one you want as the front. The seam is here, so I'll probably make this the front. And then I have this sheet of the designer series paper, and I want the holes in there. So what I found was I can take this back, the punch board back, and if I just line up this edge, I'll get one hole. This edge, I'll get my other hole, and it will line up perfectly. Okay, so now I'm going to just adhere this on to my box. And I just want to make sure I get some up here. And we'll just line those holes up. And you may have to trim the box a little bit, the, this paper just because it may not be exactly right. It may hang over a little bit. So if that bothers you, just trim it off. Things don't always cut out exactly every time you cut it and fold it and score it and all those things. So you may just have to cut. I think this is okay. And you could have it flip around the bottom too. So I think we're good here. Um, then what I did was I used the teacup. Let me just get this one. So it's actually called the Spot of Tea Framelits. And I used this one um, with the um, Merlot, Mary Merlot Glimmer Paper. And then this is Whisper White. So I just cut those out already. And then I'm going to use the Merry Christmas um, from the Better Together. This has a lot of great sentiments, and I really like that Merry Christmas. So I'm just going to stamp that on in Merry Merlot so it matches the glimmer paper. And I'm using Merry Merlot ribbon. And I kind of want to make sure I have it lined up where that circle is up top. Oops, <laughs> I had it upside down. That looks good though. It still has a circle up top. 
and what I'm talking about is that this is up top and I'm going to match it up with this kind of up top and just put it on in the center. Now with this, since it's glimmer paper, I'm going to use liquid glue because I want to make sure it sticks really well to the glitter. And this is a very strong glue. And I'm just matching up so that the shape of it, like the humps and the little dot, the little holes, kind of line up together. And then I'm going to put this on with some um, dimensionals so it sits nicely on the bag. I'll put four on. And these are really cute. I mean, whatever designer series paper you have or cardstock, you could even stamp your cardstock and, um, you know, come up with a design. You can put a uh, sentiment right on your bag. You don't even have to add something to your bag. I'm just holding the glue down. I don't think it glued down enough. I guess this one has. Hoping I'm in camera here. Just want to make sure that glue is stuck down really good. And then we're just going to place this on the box or the bag. Excuse me, I keep calling it a box and it's a bag. And then we're going to use this gorgeous ribbon. It's called um, Reversible Ribbon and it has like a coppery tone and then the Merry Merlot. So it's Merry Merlot and copper. Um, reversible ribbon and what I do is I keep it on the spool and I go front back back front and then I'll tie my bow and then I'll cut it so I make sure I have enough um, enough ribbon going through I just cut my nails and I'm having a hard time grabbing things it seems so just bear with me and we'll come through here and then I'll trim up the edges when I'm done so, isn't this pretty? I love this ribbon. Let's see if we can tie a bow here nicely. I'm going to just tie it this way. I don't like tying bows on camera here. And I'll just get it going and then I'll fuss with it later. I like to try to get the the bow to look the same. It's really pretty ribbon, but you do have to deal with the two-tone and making sure that it looks good. So let me get my ribbon scissors, and I'll just do this at an angle. And I think I need to cut this again. It got a little bit wonky. Okay, so let's do this. We'll do this again to make it a little bit shorter. And there you have it. Isn't that pretty? So this is what I was shooting for. This one has more of the green in it. I think I covered it up too much here, but I think it's fine. And then this is the large. I love this. May the beauty of the season fill your heart with joy and then this one I think is pretty too so this is the small the medium the large um, so come back tomorrow and I'm going to show you how to make this one isn't this really pretty I love this paper and it has this little flip top so I'll show you the trick to make that and then I'll have another project the next day so come on back and I uh, hope you enjoyed this if you have any questions leave them on my blog um, PS paper crafts and uh, I'll answer whatever I can, and I hope you enjoyed this. You take care. Bye.